To kick off the horror marathon, I thought I'd take a look at the British horror film, The Wicker Man. The original, of course, not that film with Nicolas Cage. No. I simply had to see this one again. I had originally seen the director's cut, and then now I've seen the theatrical cut. I had to watch it again because it's such a bizarre and strange movie, and, and you know, walking into it, I had no idea what to expect. For instance, I didn't know there were songs in it. And it's great to see Christopher Lee, and what I'm just going to straight up say is drag. So let's dig into the film. I'll first say something about the plot. Uh, so we get this police sergeant, Howie, who comes to this little island, this little remote island, uh, to investigate the disappearance of a little girl. And it is here we can digging up the secrets of what happened, and then things get a little strange, and he really learns what goes on on this island. The frame is filled with small details that make you feel unsettled about the environment of this policeman, as he walks through this rural space like a fish out of water. He enters a space where everyone knows each other's business and nobody is a stranger. This makes things difficult for him as he searches for the truth as he suspects the whole village is under conspiracy. One of the things that sticks out for me is the music and the editing as it's very unique for its time. I honestly didn't expect songs and when they came in, it didn't feel abrupt but totally creepy. For instance, a sequence like this when Howie is trying to sleep, it does a great job of bringing you into the weird things happening in the film. Then my favourite song from the film actually makes my hair stand on end, it's just so creepy. The way the song sequences are added together and pack a meeting make you scratch your head. Like they use the shadows as the children run around the maypole, also called the phallic symbol, as we learn. And that shot it is both a foreshadowing image but could also be read as a religious icon. Who knows? Now on the DVD copy that I have, there is the director's cut and the theatrical cut. The director's cut comes in at 99 minutes and the original theatrical cut is 84 minutes. If you look online, there's, there's a really good article that tells you pretty much what the difference is between uh, those two cuts. But I had originally watched the director's cut, so I thought I would sit down and see the original. And one of the problems is, even I, I saw in the director's cut, is it kind of feels like an incomplete movie. And it's especially more prevalent in the theatrical cut. For instance, whenever Sergeant Howie is walking through... Um, on his quest, on his journey through the, the, the village. It seems like it's all been very chopped up. I feel like there's information, you know, about things that he's discovering that has really been brushed by, you know. It's, 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 there's a lot of montage editing going on, so you never... Uh, it, it, to me, it felt incomplete in that way. And I think it adds to the, the enigma to the film, but at the same time, that lack of information, it just everything goes by very quickly, you know, in terms of the pacing, it's very disjointed uh, in the first half anyway. It slows down towards the end, which is good. But I think it leaves enough mystery overall, uh, and that's what makes it so shocking, you know, as the film goes on. Even even on a rewatch, it's still shocking, and it's so it's such an odd film. I mean, The Wicked Man really is a fascinating horror film for its time. It definitely stands on its own two feet as an original take on the genre, you know, inspired by a, a novel. Uh, called Ritual from in 1967 by David Pinner. Uh, no, I've never heard of the novel before in my life. Um, but in terms of this film, I think this is more of a mystery suspense film than a horror film, really. Uh, you know, there's no jump scares and there's no gore, and yet the film is just extremely haunting. And I love that it does that just through its visual imagery and very strange story, and also, of course, the, uh, the acting itself. I think it really comes down to the fact that it just examines cultism and rituals, which is you know not beyond reality, and I think that's why it's such a classic piece of British cult cinema. Now I'd briefly like to talk about the ending of the film, so skip now if you haven't seen it. Um, I just want to say how damn disturbing it is at first sight. I mean, the ending is general and first viewing quite quite a surprise, but even as I saw it again, it was still just as shocking. Um, as the film goes along, you have a damn good feeling something bad's gonna happen. You, you know something. Is up. You, you definitely feel that the town is, you know, they're all in it together. There's definitely a conspiracy. Then all of a sudden we have a whole island sending a man into a giant wicked man to be burnt along with some animals. And they begin singing as the thing burns. I mean, that, just that image is so powerful and fuck, fucked up. It really is just such a fucked up image. And, you know, it, it's, it's how he's reacting as well. Oh God! Oh Jesus Christ! A game without, you know, blood or extremely violent imagery it just creates something very horrifying. Uh, we hear the screams of Howie and the animals as the people sing, and that is enough. And then we pan into the sun, and 
you know, it burns on as the Wicker Man does. And it's just what a what a strange and frightening ending. I can definitely see how this one um, shocked people at the time. It's it's a very different film for its time, and don't 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 uh, go near the remake. This is the one you want to watch. It is a, it's a great film. It held up on the second viewing, and it's one full of enigma. And there's, there's a lot of good special features in this too. Looking at the making of the film, and um, yeah, overall this is a very good watch. Stay tuned for the next video, everybody. I think I'm reviewing American Werewolf in London or Eyes Without a Face next. So. Stay tuned for the next review.